Good morning. Welcome to all of you in the name of our Savior, Jesus. It's a very special morning this morning. It is the day that we are celebrating confirmation. That's a word that means strengthening. When Jesus was about to ascend back to heaven, he gave his disciples a great commission. He said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Today is the day that we get to celebrate that great commission with four new young people that we, they have been baptized, they have been taught, and today they come to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us, to celebrate a unity of faith with us, and ultimately to celebrate with us the hope for heaven that we all share together. It is a great and wonderful day. Hopefully as you came in, you picked up one of these service folders. This will be our order of service for today. It tells you that our opening hymn is hymn number 221, Blessed Jesus at Your Word. Before we begin, let's take a few moments for silent prayer and meditation to prepare our hearts for worship. God's blessings. Please stand. In the name of God the Father, who raised his Son from the dead, Alleluia. 
In the name of God, the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who rose triumphant from the grave and has conquered sin and death for us. Hallelujah. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit, who has brought us to believe and to share in Christ's victory. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Lord God, I humbly come before you. I confess that I am sinful in thought, word, and deed. I daily fail to do what you command, and I continually do what you forbid. Lord, I am sorry. I believe that for the sake of my Lord Jesus Christ, you will have mercy on me. I pray that you would strengthen me by your Holy Spirit, so that all I do may give you glory. By Christ's command and with his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The vacant cross and the empty grave are God's signs to you that he has accepted the sacrifice of his one and only son. Jesus was delivered over to death because of our offenses and was raised to life to prove that our sins are forgiven. Whoever believes this simple truth of scripture has eternal life. Let us now sing praises to Christ, the Lamb of God, who has won the victory for us. You may be seated and we'll continue with the hymn of the day. That's hymn number 367, Christ Be My Leader. you all from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, members of St. Paul's, guests, visitors, family, friends of these fine yet four young Christian Christians, come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and, and our leader, leader through, through this earthly life. Isn't it great that spring is here? I have to admit, it personally, spring is a very close second to my favorite times of the, of the year. I have to admit, I like the fall better. But spring, spring isn't just too far behind my favorite of fall. You think about how much we here in northeast Nebraska just in the last few weeks have been teased, 
teased with spring that you get this nice bluebird day, 70 degrees for a couple of days a few weeks ago. And then, you know what? Well, just last weekend, I cut grass on Saturday and was shoveling snow off my driveway on Monday morning. These teasers that we get that say spring is here. And I'm no farmer. But those teasers that say, boy, I got to get the planter out, I got to get going, got to get those seeds in the soil so that they grow. I think, I think, I didn't put my shovels away yet, but I think spring is here for good. What a great time of year. The birds are singing, the trees are getting buds, getting leaves on them, the grass is growing. And before you know it, if you haven't seen them already, Mr. Farmer is going to be out there planting Mr. Farmer is going to be out there cultivating spring, getting all ready. And right, spring hopes eternal in spring. We all say God is going to send the rains at the right time. The sun is going to shine. I'm going to have an abundant crop, a bumper crop this year. And everything is going to go, go very well. And to one extent, right, all of us here this morning really are farmers to one degree to another. We may not grow hundreds or thousands of acres of corn or soybeans or wheat. Maybe my farm is that little 10 by 10 plot in the backyard. Maybe my farm is just the grass I grow in the front yard that I mow and take care of. But to one extent or another, don't we grow crops in a very real way in our earthly lives, everyday lives? And it's interesting to see that comparison, the comparison that Jesus uses in our text this morning for uh, our sermon meditation for this Confirmation Sunday to look at the connection that Jesus uses for not only for young Christian confirmands, but a connection that he makes for all of us as we live our Christian lives to, to his glory. That you look at that and use that illustration of a bumper crop, of plants growing. How is it? that you and I use that comparison, that illustration to guide the rest of our lives. Again, not just for four young eighth graders, young Christians for the rest of their lives, but each and every one of us. I don't care what the age is here. How do we move forward after this command that Jesus gives us? That really, when we look at Jesus' encouragement to the four, yes, but also to the rest of us, he says, look forward to a bumper crop, plan for a bumper crop. We're reminded in these words that Jesus speaks that the seed has already been planted, but even though that seed has been planted, doesn't Jesus tell us a very important responsibility to keep growing, to keep nurturing, to keep feeding that seed that has been sown? So look, dear friends, you four young friends up here front and center, yeah, look for a bumper crop, but also for the rest of us. Look for and expect a bumper crop from our Savior God. Would you follow along in our service folder? The, the text for our meditation this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. That's our text. I find it interesting to see timing the timing of including this text for a day like today, to see the timing of a day like today with the last few weeks being very fresh in, in our memories as Christians just a few weeks ago gathering in, in various places to worship and praise and thank God for Jesus Christ. Easter, Lent, Holy Week. These words that Jesus speaks in our text here, John chapter 15, are words that Jesus spoke while he was in the upper room on Monday, Thursday night, speaking, teaching to his friends, to his disciples, even though it was just hours away before he would be arrested, beaten, tortured, nailed to a cross, suffer the, the punishment for our sins. And here's Jesus, John chapter 15, encouraging, teaching, reminding his disciples, reminding us of this importance of this bumper crop of salvation. 
that Jesus very accurately, as, as is portrayed throughout the Bible, conveys the truth to us just how it is that this bumper crop is grown and is harvested and is accomplished. That he talks about this relationship, I am the vine, you are the branches. That, right, if you're going to plant a row or two of sweet corn in your backyard, if you're going to plant hundreds of acres of corn out on your farm, isn't it true that a certain thing has to happen first before you harvest fruit? That you plant the seed and a stalk grows, and doesn't the ear of corn, the fruit, grow off the stalk? This is the comparison that Jesus is saying to his disciples, to us, to you four. I am the vine, you guys are the branches. The branches and eventually the fruit, the fruit of salvation comes from the stalk, comes from the branch of Jesus Christ. And isn't this true what we've been talking about all year in confirmation class, what we talk about here? How is it that saving faith and the fruit of salvation and the fruit of Christian living, how is it that all of that is accomplished? doesn't come from me making some, some grand scheme and some fantastic plan to, to do this and to do that. That seed of the gospel, the seed of faith, was planted, yeah, probably by some very heavy influence of Christian parents, Christian family, baptism, that whole thing, connection of God's word that you four were, were wonderfully and humbly, humbly served by Christian parents. But when your Christian parents brought you to baptism, when your Christian parents brought you guys to a house of worship, to the Word of God, to St. Paul's Lutheran School, to confirmation class, to worship, it wasn't them who was nurturing that seed. It wasn't them that was causing that seed to be grown. They brought you to the seed. They brought the seed to you, the seed of God's Word. But here's this whole relationship with the stalk, the branch, and the vine is that that grows all by itself. That, does, that, that growing of faith, that growing of, of fruit and, and the vine, this is accomplished by the work of our triune God. We talk about that sanctification, the work of the Holy Spirit creating and strengthening faith. We talk about the work of God the, God the Father who gives you your time of grace. What do I do with my time of grace as long as I'm on this earth? And then, of course, as I said, this interesting timing of a confirmation just a few weeks after our Lent and Holy Week that we're reminded of that redemption that Jesus won for you, for us, and what we do. That, yeah, you and I as Christians, you guys, and especially now you confirmants to say, you know, this is part of, of, of flying out of the nest, right? Mom and Dad, not pushing you, but you, you're leaving the nest, leaving home, taking on more and more responsibilities, a connection with church, what are, what are we going to do? This is part of that saying, what decisions are you guys going to make? What decisions do the rest of us make as we live our Christian lives to say, am I going to use that mirror of God's word? Am I going to use the truths of those, those words that God gives me, the direction, the morality that he gives me in his word to make decisions? What am I going to do when I get out of that comfortable little cocoon of St. Paul's Lutheran School, when I get out of that comfortable Christian cocoon of Christian family? And saying, what decisions am I going to make? Am I going to remember those truths of God's moral law? That it's only through that power, through the authority of God's holy word, that the Holy Spirit uses. And this is a very good reminder for us, that the seed has been planted. Thank God for faithful Christian parents, for faithful Christian family, all the different friends, all the different faithful influences that affect our lives and your lives as well. Thank God for that. But that seed also, I have a personal responsibility to that seed. The seed that says, what decisions am I going to make? How am I going to include those truths and that power and that authority of God's word in my life? And you guys, you four, are coming up to a pretty challenging time for that. High school, college years, all kinds of different directions. Remember that unholy trinity the devil, the world, and my own sinful flesh, man, you are going to be dragged in all kinds of different directions, tempted to be dragged in all kinds of different directions. And this is where that reminder comes for all of us. That maybe you out there don't have any direct connection with these four fine young, young Christians here. You're here as a 
normal member of St. Paul's. It's a good reminder for us, each and every one of us, to say, ask, do a little analyzing. How well have I done since I was confirmed, since I was in this, this spot that these, these four young Christians are? Have I used God's word as faithfully as I, I could have? And as we all join together before just doing, confessing our sins to God and saying, no, you and I, when we're honest with ourselves, we haven't been as faithful as we could be. How is it that I can improve my Christian living? How is it that as a Christian family, parents, siblings, grandparents, how is it that I can improve my Christian example, not only for these four Christians to follow, but for anybody else to see? And to follow. Here's the reminder for us that it's only through that word that the Holy Spirit works that saving faith and increases that saving faith for me to live my life to his glory. And this is this, this reminder. St. Paul gives us the reminder in Colossians about the responsibility, the privilege that it is to grow, to grow in the knowledge of God. St. Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. And that's the key word I would say for us all. And again, you guys, growing in the knowledge of God. It's a continuing process. It can be very tempting as Christian parents to say, I've done my part. How many trips have I made to school and dropped off kids and picked up kids and I brought my kid to confirmation class? I've done my part. Confirmation's done. Okay, go ahead and fly. Cecilia, Andrew, Abby, Colton, go ahead and fly. But dear parents, I don't care how old you are, how old we get to be, as long as we have children, don't we have that responsibility of being Christian parents and the responsibility of being Christian children? My parents don't stop being my Christian parents. That relationship of giving admonition when it's needed, giving encouragement when it's needed, to accept admonition, to accept encouragement when it's given in the light and the truth and the love of God's word. That relationship does not end, dear friends, parents, kids. We're all in that same boat. And in this process of confirmation, to join with one another and to see this fruition, to see the, the, the fruit of faith, that, yeah, you four guys will be standing up front and center and, and making your vows, making your promises, but it's the same thing that the rest of us do as well. The reminder that, yeah, Jesus Triune God is the stalk. He is the vine. We are the branches growing out from that. To bear fruit, to show that love and service to God, to show that love and service to neighbors, to the people around us. And so an exciting day, a nervous day, nervous for me too, nervous day to say, boy, all these people coming for, for what? Yeah, to shake your hands to give you congratulations, to, to, to give you cards and, and all this. Okay, front and center for a little while, but dear friends, let's always remember at front and center, no matter what the day, confirmation. Our triune God, our Savior Jesus, always, always is that leader, always is that branch, and we the vines growing out from that branch to live lives to his glory, to produce fruits of faith in service to our Savior God and to one another. So, dear friends, there is no... My, my prayer, my prayer for you for really is no different than the prayer of your Christian parents. Right? Isn't the first prayer that we give as Christian parents, yeah, yeah, I hope, I hope Junior goes to, to school and graduates summa cum laude, and I hope Junior does all this and all that, but really, isn't the first prayer that we give as Christian parents, which is my prayer for you, someday... I want to worship my Savior God with my kids. I want to worship my Savior God with you when we get home to heaven, whenever that is, right? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe you'll beat me to heaven. Maybe I'll beat you to heaven. Whatever the, the good Lord decides, isn't the prayer the same? To be joining with our Savior God for eternity, singing his praises, 
having no more of this junk called sin, the results, the consequences of sin, that's our prayer. And so we join. We join in the prayer for the Holy Spirit to continue working in your hearts, to make decisions to continue to grow in that grace and the truth of God's word so that one day we all do reach our eternal home in heaven. So the reminder for us all to grow, to expect and look for that bumper crop of salvation. God promises it. This isn't wishful, this isn't wishful thinking hope. We have this hope, this certain hope, the promise that Pastor Reichert was mentioning before, this promise, this truth of, of salvation in, in Jesus Christ. The hope and the certainty of a bumper crop of salvation. That, that seed of the gospel has been planted. Thank God for that. But also, dear friends, rest of us, dear friends, let's continue to grow. Grow as a family called Christians, a Christian family in Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you all stand and let's join together in joining that, join together in our confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. It's printed on the bottom of page four, three, going on to page four. Let's join together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death. <coughs> he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let's gather our thank offerings.
Okay. All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And truly, I am with you always to the very end of the age. In obedience to the Lord's command, you have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now you have also been taught the precious truths of the Christian faith as confessed by our evangelical Lutheran church. You guys, you four confirmands, know what God has given you by his grace and what he expects of you as his dear child. Now, based on your confession of unity and your promise of faithfulness, we invite you to exercise the privilege of receiving the Lord's body and blood with us in the sacrament of Holy Communion. You four confirmands are here to make a public confession of your Christian faith. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans, says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Cecilia, Andrew, Abigail, Colton, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge that in baptism God gave you the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Do you believe all the books of the Bible to be the inspired, inerrant, infallible word of God and the only right standard for your faith and life? Do you believe that the teaching of this congregation, St. Paul's, Norfolk, and of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the word of God? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this teaching and to endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you intend faithfully to conform all your life to the teachings of God's word, to be faithful in the use of word and sacrament by attending worship and Bible study regularly and often, and in faith and action to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as long as you live? Your parents, parents of the confirmands, would you kindly stand? Having heard these public professions of faith by these, your children, you promise to continue with the help of God to encourage them to faithfully conform all their lives to the teachings of God's word. Do you intend to encourage them to faithfully study the word and receive the sacrament, to be in worship and, regular, uh, and Bible study regularly and often, as is our Lord's command and desire, and in faith and action to remain forever true to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That's an important family, parents, right? But isn't it also a wonderful thing to have this family called St. Paul's Church? Would the rest of this church family kindly stand as well? To this Christian congregation, having heard this profession of faith by our confirmands, do you receive them as fellow communicant members of this church? Likewise, will you carry out your Christian responsibility of caring for the souls of these young members of our fellowship? 
Will you in Christian love continue to assist them in whatever manner possible so that they may remain children of God until death? Since it is God alone who enables us both to, to will and to do his good pleasure, it is right for us, dear friends in Christ, to call on him for the sake of these confirmands, that he would graciously complete the good work which he has begun in them. Let us therefore bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, author and perfecter of our faith, in mercy you join these children of yours to your church when they were born again of water and the Spirit. We thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing them to the knowledge of you and your grace and in giving them both hearts to believe and mouths to confess your saving name. Help them to live in love and harmony with one another and to work together in serving you. Enable them to bring forth the fruits of faith and to continue steadfast and victorious in your resurrection hope until the day comes when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness in your heavenly kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and let's join in our next hymn. It's on pages 10 and 11 of the service folder, uh, In Christ Alone.
from the bottom of page 8, page 8 of the service folder. Dear members of the confirmation class, just as we as a Christian congregation have here asked our Heavenly Father to confer his blessing on all of you, we now commit that blessing to each of you individually. Cecilia Ann Rose Keating. May God the Father who created you, may God the Son who redeemed you, may God the Holy Spirit who sanctified you keep you faithful until life everlasting. Cecilia's passage is printed for us on page 13. She has chosen 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Abigail May Pleshek. May God the Father who created you, may God the Son who redeemed you, may God the Holy Spirit who sanctified you keep you faithful until life everlasting. Oh, I'm, I'm out of order here. I just shook your hand a little too soon. Sorry there. Abigail. Abigail chose Isaiah chapter 40, 41, verse 10 as her confirmation verse. Isaiah 41, 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will, uh, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There we go, Abigail. Blessings. Oh, those are sweet. There you go. Blessings. Colton Kyle Price. May God the Father who created you, may God the Son who redeemed you, may God the Holy Spirit who sanctified you, Keep you faithful until life everlasting. Your confirmation passage is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. God bless you, Colt. Cecilia, Andrew, Abigail, Colton, with the help of God, go and continue to be strengthened in your faith through the study of God's word all your days. Celebrate with special reverence and joy the fellowship that you have with your Savior and those who share your common faith as you partake in the pre precious privilege of the Lord's Supper. Let your light shine before the world so that your Father in heaven may be praised. The almighty and most merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you. Go in peace. Let's give our attention to the choir.
The Lord's Supper that we are about to celebrate is an expression of unity of faith and confession between believers, a special opportunity for our new confirmants to join in that unity of faith and confession. So as we begin our celebration of the Lord's Supper, we invite all of those members of St. Paul's and our sister Wells churches to commune with us. Please stand as we continue our service on page 21 in the front part of your hymnals. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we praise you especially for the glorious resurrection of your Son, the true Passover Lamb, who by his sacrifice took away the sins of the world and by his resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Let's continue now with the Song of Simeon that you can find on page 24 in the front part of your hymnals. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy Let us pray. O God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we willingly serve you day after day through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. That's hymn 537, Onward Christian Soldiers. <laughs> 